Okay, I'd like to welcome Michael Prokop, who's giving his talk about continuous delivery of Debian packages. So give him a big applause, please. Thanks. I'd like to start with uh, clarifying the terminology. Um, every one of you might know continuous integration coming from software development. Um, continuous deployment is what we understand with as soon as the QA criteria is uh, fine, we ship or deploy it. We don't wait for any further feedback. Continuous delivery, this is what we are talking about now, is you release whenever you decide it's useful to release, so it's kind of a business decision. Does it make sense to release right now because some customers are paying us for this or users are waiting for a new release and it makes sense to release it right now? So in terms of, we can call it continuous integration um, in, a, in a further extended way. Um, why are we talking about all of this? Um, um, it's like, what are the benefits we, we get from continuous delivery in terms of Debian project or in terms of what we are talking about here? Is the, the cost of a bug fix um, are getting bigger and bigger in terms of when we are in the pipeline. If we are in the, in the beginning where we, we have requirements, design, it's quite cheap to change uh, things and define things, what, what should it look like, and it's getting much more expensive um, later on. Code, development, accounting, operations, once we deployed all the system, all the changes are getting much more expensive. So what we would like to have is some kind of independence. We don't want to, to, to rely on this specific laptop or on this specific machine, like nobody knows how to rebuild it from scratch or how to change anything. What if we just take it out of operations? Will anything break? We want to be able to, to kind of scale not just in terms of um, um, one build to many builds. Of course, this is nice, but we would be we would like to be able to also start small and just grow as needed in terms of people. Maybe it's a, a small team packaging team, like we have five people. What happens if we grow to like 500 people? Um, reproducible. We would like to have a way of making sure the package we built we can also rebuild like two years later on. The Debian reproducible um, project um, might be well known, and um, what's also important is that we have it predictable. Like, we really want to have metrics to estimate build times, um, times to fix. So if we change anything in our software and the build time increases, it would be nice to identify what was responsible. Is it an infrastructure change? Is it a, a packaging change? Is it like upstream change? Do we have any further build dependencies? So what we would like to know is, assuming we would have to fix this and that package, how long would it take us to deliver it to our end user or, or customer? Um, I'd like to talk about a few problems um, we had at a company um, where I'm working for. Um, there was a kind of mess with, with golden images uh, to, to ship uh, custom software stack to customers. Um, it was a long build time. As soon as you changed something, you had to rebuild all the image. You had to upload the image to the customer for one single small change. Um, we also had um, like builds non-reproducible. It was unmanaged infrastructure, so nobody knew on which machine was it built. Um, Developers could even build their own package and upload it, or maybe even a binary and just include it in the, in the image. Also, the release process was holding back uh, the ongoing development. As soon as we uh, were heading for a new release, the code was frozen in the version control. Nobody could do any further work in master branches. Um, and all the release process was holding back actual ongoing work. Getting more and more customers meant uh, that we even had to build even more images and diverting from each other, like customers have specific needs or nothing to share maybe even. We tried like Debian source package uploads to a custom build service, not, not so sophisticated as the, the Debian one, but in times of we don't even upload any binaries, we just rebuilt the, the, the package from scratch. But the developers still needed to manually build or release packages themselves. This means they need some tools from Debian or Ubuntu. Um, they 
might have problems with actually releasing stuff, what should go in the changelog, what version number do I have to use? So this was kind of a big problem. It solved some, some smallish problems in the, in the first um, part, but not the overall vision we had. So what actually do we want to have? If you look at the continuous delivery book, the famous one, this is what a continuous, a continuous de um, deployment pipeline looks like. We have a, a delivery team which has version control checks in some stuff. We have built and unit tests, and if they fail, we just go back in the cycle and start again. Once they pass, we can get to the next step, which is like automated acceptance test. If they still fail, we'll go back in the queue. Check in, trigger, trigger. Now they, we have user acceptance test, and if they pass, we can get to the release. So we we transferred this into an, some kind of workflow for us. What would we like to have? The developer should just have something like git commit and git review. Just push it to the code review system. That's, that's it. Nothing, nothing further. You shouldn't touch the event change log at all. Shouldn't care about um, what release are, you, are we actually facing. If we want to just go for ongoing um, development, just push to master. Jenkins, one continuous integration server, um, then verifies what we actually build. It relies on daemon builds we, we automatically get once you do the git review. We get custom PPAs, which can be used for development and testing, like I want to test is what I'm doing actually working. Like the developer might not know what the daemon package looked like in the end result. So he just pushes it, get a daemon package, and can just install it on the environment. If uh, Jenkins uh, says, no, I'm not good. We are just going back in the, in the queue and say, well, just fix it, git review again. And once you have the, the plus one, like I'm good, you can um, integrate the code reviewers like other people just look at their daemon packaging stuff or possibly just the, the software itself and say, does this make sense? Can we push this? Yes, no. Once we are good, we just submit it to a master branch or whatever maintenance branch. We will look at that later. And we have some kind of different needs. The internal tooling, like we run our own infrastructure, we don't need a release dashboard. We can just push it and um, apply it on our infrastructure once we're happy with it. But we also have the, the product cycle, which is like a given release, a new given release. And we, we then decided to go for a release dashboard where we have all the projects and just say, we want to release a new version I don't care about what's in the deep and change log. Um, we will automate this, this handling. We create the according branches, we create the according tags, we create the according change log entries, and apply the final build. And then all the release workflow, like automated testing, acceptance testing, the QA team can decide whether we are fit for release or not. Just continuous, and then we ship it to customers, like Debian packages. It's really just app get update, app get upgrade. That's it. So that's what we actually want to have. Now, how did we get there? We, had, we decided on some principles. We just rely on Debian packages for, and Debian repositories for everything, no exceptions, whatever, really nothing. Only what's under version control matters. Um, you don't have any chance to bypass anything into the, the final product, into the final um, system without um, having it under version control. Otherwise, it can't even end up there. And automate all the infrastructure handling, like we don't want to touch any systems manually. All the configuration management systems, et cetera, should take place. We, we are using Puppet and Ansible. Um, automation. We have automated the event change log handling to simplify the, the, the releasing of new package versions, like you don't want to, to think about what version number do I actually need. We know this is a new build, or this is a hot fix, or this is a minor change. Um, we can all, all decide on that. Um, so developers don't need Debian or Ubuntu at all. They, of course, are encouraged to do so, but um, sometimes you have developers working on very specific components of software and they aren't using uh, Debian or don't want to use Debian or Ubuntu for whatever reason. Um, we have automated release branch handling. So whenever we have a new release, uh, the according new release branch gets created the same for a new hotfix. Everything is created automatically. So once you want to fix an existing release, you know you can go at every single project, just go into the according branch, and everything is there as released. 
We have VMs for testing and development. Uh, we are using Vagrant, so whenever you have a problem and someone says, um, there's this bug report, the steps to reproduce, all you have to do is like Vagrant up, take the project, uh, the product in the according uh, name, and choose the according version. And all, everything else is set up automatically. So we have automated box builds at least once per day, so that these so-called base boxes for Vagrant are automatically there for the according releases. And important part, we have PPAs for development. So <laughs> no uh, version control freezes at all. You can always push to master. All masters should always be good, always good to release. But what is actually released is in, a, in separate branches. So we just have fast forward um, approach. You always have to rebase. There's no, no option for merge, and you don't know what you will get. It's just fast forward and the according release branches. Um, some improvements that we made in, the, in this process is um, usage of tempfs and eat metadata for just building um, faster, or the Ccache. So we try to get our builds as fast as possible. Once a user or developer just pushes uh, git review, the daemon package should come out as soon as possible. We use dashboards for abstractions. Um, so people can focus on the actual task. They don't have to look at Jenkins. Is this now blue or yellow or red? Where's the error? Whatever. Um, which build parameters do we actually need to use to end up in the according release? The, the dashboard takes care of this. It, it knows which project should go into a release, which branches do we have, which tags do we have. So the release manager as well as, as um, the, the according developers have according front ends for their actual needs. And very important is the code review system. The code review system improves, of course, code quality, but it's also nice for sharing knowledge amongst people. Like, um, you are not yet working in some project, but there needs to be someone reviewing the code. So you tend to ask, is this useful, what we are doing there? Um, could you maybe um, be more verbose in the commit message to explain the actual situation you're trying to fix? And it helps, of course, introducing new people because new, new developers can just start hacking and they get good feedback from people used to work with this project. So they, you can actually see the progress in a, in, a, in a bug fix, to see what other people are fixing, what's the workflow there. So code review isn't just about the quality of code, it's also about the quality of a team. And um, what, what's under our system is the so-called jenkins Debian glue. Um, many of you might know this. The nice thing about standards is that there are so many of them to choose from, um, which is kind of like why I asked in the beginning, um, do, we, do you use CowBuilder or SBuild? Um, then we have CowDancer and PBuilder. We have DBuild, we have DPackage, build package, uh, DPack, DPackage, build package. We have tons of, of, of wrappers or, or existing tools, and they are like, different flavors and uh, this, this is good there and, and that's bad and whatever. Um, so one, one of the main issues important for me was I don't want to build another tool. I just want to glue existing tools together to just be able to replace one component by the other if for whatever reason I'm ha and unhappy with something. Um, it's building on top of Jenkins. Jenkins was called Hudson before. In uh, 2011 it was renamed to Jenkins. They have weekly releases where you can just follow current development. They have LTS versions, which is recommended if you run it in production or for actual usage. Um, it's MIT licensed, and nowadays there are more than 1,000 plugins available for good and bad purposes. Um, like you need to identify which plugins are actually useful and which ones <coughs> actually help and provide uh, something for you. There are more than 120,000 registered installations as of July. And just as a disclaimer, it's written in Java, but it's absolutely not restricted to, to it at all. You can run whatever kind of um, uh, project with it. It's like grown on steroids. Um, it's really just a an, an way of scheduling um, jobs of, of um, managing artifacts and such stuff. So why uh, Jenkins Deep and Glue? It's, we're, we started to formalize the existing knowledge we know about even packaging. Uh, provide a, a framework we can work with, provide a common ground to base further work on. If we decide to, to, to integrate new stuff, it should be 
built on top of it. Uh, we wanted to gather feedback from other users, um, what might they need and what's definitely um, useful and already happened is like you get contributions for further improving your internal system. So it was also a kind of community building, so we can talk to each other, what problems do other companies, what do um, other de Debian developers have. And don't create new tools or standards, really. We are just relying on what's available in the Debian ecosystem. Um, and it should be easy to use also for non-Debian folks, like there are people developing upstream software and they would like to provide Debian packages. As soon as they have some kind of working Debian directory, it's quite easy to get according builds with Jenkins Debian Glue. So what's behind Jenkins Debian Glue? It's an uh, open source project, I'm, I'm also MIT licensed, started in 2011. We had more than 25 contributors to it so far. Uh, it's written mainly in shell, um, easy to adjust and extend. And mainly through hooks and according uh, configuration variables, environment variables, it's just relying on, C on a CI server, so technically it would be possible to just switch Jenkins to something else, but um, it's the, the easiest option and open source uh, CI server available. Um, it uses um, cowbuilder pbuilder as a build environment, um, has out-of-the-box support for Git and Subversion. Um, I know that there are users of Bazaar and Mercurial and whatever, um, but out-of-the-box we support Git and Subversion uh, with ready-to-go scripts. Um, it has repository management included with Reprepro, which every one of you um, should know, and, and the so-called Fright, um, which is a very simple tool, but seems to be useful for some uh, specific purposes. And with plenty of QA tools included for, in terms of support, like ViewParts, LinkedIn, Auto Package Test, PEP8, uh, Percritic, Shell Check, and Check Beschissen. So who is using uh, Jenkins Steven Glue? Uh, we have um, in the Grimmer project, we also host B package, file in the first tools, also all the, the, the Grimmer projects or the, the, the Grimmer packages. Uh, Postgres has a pretty uh, sophisticated and big setup, um, building for all the supported uh, Postgres versions for all the all kinds of distributions. LLVM, Camaleo, Wikimedia, so there are plenty of users and we get quite interesting feedback from in terms of what they actually need. If you want to test it after the talk, um, there's the manual approach where you can just set up anything uh, manually, but there's an automated um, setup where it just um, gets some script, easy to review, it's trivial. Um, it's just a puppet recipe um, or module which sets up Jenkins, Jenkins Debian Glue, and um, three jobs for playing around. So you get everything what you need. It's set up in like, five minutes on faster machines, it just depends on your system. It's um, set up in, in some few minutes. And th this is what you'll get. You get a, a Jenkins setup with, with three Jenkins jobs, um, Jenkins Debian Glue source, Jenkins Debian Glue binaries, and Jenkins Debian Glue viewports. So this is what we will talk about now. The so-called whatever project you're working on source is generating this Debian source package for you. It's relying on the version control system, so it's except it expects that everything is there in version control. Everything what's on a version control matters. Um, it generates the upstream source, uh, Debian changes if if uh, applies the control file. Um, it's actually executing a so-called script generate git or generate uh, SVN snapshot. This also automates the changelog handling, so you don't have to manually write anything to the changelog. It's it's looking at your history. Um, thanks for git dch uh, Guido. Very useful. Um, important, it needs to be run only once per project, except if you're building for multiple distributions, something different. But um, out of the box, you just need it to build once, as usual, for Debian packaging. In the binaries job, then we do the actual Debian binary package build. We have a script called build and provide package. It automates the, the p builder or cow builder actually setup. So you usually, if you don't have any special needs, it does everything for you automatically, so you don't even have to set up cowbuilder or whatever. Everything will be set up for you. And you build once per architecture or distribution, whatever you are targeting, except for architecture all packages, of course. 
The Bubrats jobs um, is um, useful to get automated install, upgrade, and um, removal tests. Um, it's optional. You don't have to use it, of course. But it's useful since you might forget about it. Um, you don't have the according Bubrat setup available if you're working on a package. Uh, Jenkins DBGlue automates this, and you don't have to take care of this manually as well. We have the repository handling. It's automatically handling all the repositories without any manual interaction. So you don't have to call any repo command lines or yourself, the configuration set up for you. Um, by default, it's included in this so-called binaries Jenkins job, uh, just for, for to make it easy. Um, once you scale out or have specific needs, you might want to just separate it into a specific Jenkins job. We by default, assume that it's the so-called project repos job. And you can control it then to just uh, build only in the binaries job and provide only then in the, in the repos job. So you can be very specific what you need. You might even want to use dput or whatever other tool to just upload to a repository. Then you can just split off the, the binaries part and the repository part. It's just for having it configurable as uh, needed. Then we apply further QA testing. Lintian is automatically executed in the source and in the binaries job. Auto package test is also executed automatically. So once you have a Debian test directory in your, in your package, it automatically invokes auto package test. Um, it looks at the according code policies of, of Perl, um, shell code, uh, Python. And all the results are available as tap and J unit tests in for Jenkins usage. Like you see um, in this line of code, we have a problem. Um, Jenkins then can just uh, provide the according feedback. Do I fail the build or should we continue? It's fine for me if, if, if just uh, shell check is, is unhappy. So all the results are available as according reports then. So an example of a build pipeline we use is like you review, uh, pu uh, push it to review. Um, run some unit tests available in your Python project, for example. Then if this succeeds, you continue to building the source package. You run all the binary builds, run the pubers checks, make sure that the package itself is fine, include the according result in the, in the repo, and then be able to just app get install the package from the repos you're interested in. Now, um, Managing many Jenkins jobs without driving nuts. Um, once you start for every single project to have like five or maybe even 10 Jenkins jobs, and you have a product with 50 to 100 event packages, um, this is quite difficult to manage manually. And you might want to change the behavior of all the binaries jobs or of all the source jobs. So what, what to do? Um, the, the OpenStack project has a very nice tool called Jenkins Job Builder. And it relies on, on YAML files for configuration. You just have plain text files describing how your project should look like. And we have um, on, on GitHub um, from the Zipwise company, there's a Camellio Dep Jenkins uh, project, which has an example of how this could look like. There are plenty of others um, available as well. And it's very nice uh, to use that way, because you don't have to click anything in Jenkins web interface at all for handling the, the, the jobs. You have the possibility to just use it under version control. So you have your repos with all that, that your Jenkins configs in there. And if you apply a change, you just commit it with the according uh, message. Um, and of course, you can include it in the code review system, system again. Like, does this change make actually sense for our infrastructure? Um, will the result look good? included in testing um, environments, et cetera. Now, during this process, I mean, this is like, I was talking now for 25 minutes, but this, this took us more than, than a few years to actually be there where we are. And we had quite some, some lessons on the way. Um, developer needs might be quite different um, from operation or distribution needs. They might want to have a specific package um, which isn't available in the distribution yet, or they might need a specific version of a package which isn't available in the according distribution yet. Um, of course, you should contribute back to the to upstream distribution in terms of uh, here, of course, Debian. Um, when reasonable, um, there might be packages which aren't distributable or whatever for, for some reason, but it makes sense um, 
to to just just push um, back upstream as as possible. Diverse people improve the overall quality. It's um, it's it's interesting to have some common ground of infrastructure for systems, um, but uh, for for code quality, it's really inter interesting to have diverse people, and this includes different distributions as well. Like not just think about what Debian provides. Outsiders might provide interesting input from other distributions. Code review requires good remote working culture. Um, open source folks are used to remote working, so I'm not actually here to 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 promote this because every one of you might be used to working in this kind of working style. But it's something not not so much used in in in, in corporate environments that uh, aren't driven by remote working culture. Um, external dependencies, like um, we have uh, failures on GitHub or uh, CPAN is down or unreachable or PyPy, um, PyPy, uh, Ruby games, Puppet Labs, Percona. This is all, these are all examples we we hit in production usage. So what you definitely want to have is local mirrors of every external dependency you have. Um, it's also good because it speed, uh, you get a speed up of your uh, build environment and you have staging options like you, before going and shipping this to the customer, you decide, can I push an update from this specific module or package and only then I will provide it in the production mirror. Um, configuration management, it's essential to, to just have the infrastructure as code. If you want to apply any changes to all your Jenkins slaves, this should just go out to the configuration management, whatever you're using, if it's Puppet or Ansible or Chef. Um, doesn't matter, it, but it's essential that you have some kind of configuration management um, to ensure um, consistency. Also consistent time zones. Um, make all the systems in the same time zone. Make sure they, they use some network time protocol um, so all the systems are, you can compare logs from different systems. Also the catch-22 situation, like we ran into this. Um, the build scripts are broken, but the build infrastructure itself receives the updates for the build infrastructure. So we have some kind of recursion problem. How do you fix a problem if the underlying infrastructure actually applying those changes is broken? Also, upgrading from, from VC to Jesse was everything working, but the deployment of the configuration management depends on unit tests, which don't work on Jesse yet. So in terms of... of um, this recursion problem, you should definitely have some test infrastructure for, for setup, for um, configuration changes, so you don't break production um, systems. And this doesn't mean just the production system for the customer, it's also um, the, the production system of your own infrastructure. The, a rebuild of a system might look different from current, the currently running one, even with config management. Because just because you install the package now doesn't mean the same result will be in two years if you rebuild the system from scratch. So you should also have some testing for the configuration management in place. There are plenty of projects like server spec, M spec data, test server, test kitchen, whatever you prefer. But you should definitely have some tests also for your own um, infrastructure available. Some tips. Um, regular rebuilds of all packages um, are very good and important because you apply recent policies and, and package build infrastructure changes to the packages. Once you change the underlying build infrastructure, the result might be different from whatever you're building. You might have parallel builds um, for, for your daemon packages and this is a change in your infrastructure and you have to rebuild the packages. And this means what we are doing is like for every single release, we rebuild all the packages. We never take the, the, the package from the previous release. All the packages are built with all this current infrastructure. If you have to deal with plenty of, of uh, repositories, no matter if it's Git, uh, Subversion, or whatever, the MR or my repos nowadays tool is very useful for dealing with large amounts of repositories. The, the, the Perl package group has uh, very good documentation about this on, on the Debian wiki. And very important, integrate your um, continuous delivery system in your monitoring infrastructure. If there's something broken, it should get the same attention as fixing something in customer production. It, as soon as you can't build any more packages, all the developers are stuck in, in development. 
it's interesting also to, to gather some, some metrics um, independent from whatever you use. If you're pushing data into Jenkins, you get like build times and, and logs and whatever into Jenkins, but once you delete a job, it's gone. Also, um, there might be infrastructure changes or cleanup um, for, um, for, the, for the Jenkins jobs. And to, then you lose all this kind of data. So it's interesting to just provide uh, the metrics into some in, uh, independent uh, project or database or whatever. Um, we are using uh, Garrett as a code review system. Um, and if you don't like the web interface, um, many don't know this yet. There's um, also from the OpenStack community or project itself the Gerti command line tool, which provides a command line interface to Garrett. So you can just use it on the command line. It has great support for offline. So you can actually go to your airplane, hack on it, um, review. And once you go, go back online, you can just push all the, 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 the things you did, which is ab absolutely great uh, for, for working with it. And also good is um, some kind of Jenkins verified job, like you, whatever um, CI or CD uh, server you might use, but let's call it a verified job to ensure the system actually is working as needed. Are the slaves there I need? Um, can I trigger a build of some specific job or test job? For, um, does authentication work? Do I have the users look the, that do the, the nodes actually look good? Because once you get, get problems in your infrastructure when restarting the CI server, um, things get out of control. And we identified some anti-patterns um, for, for a continuous delivery environment. As soon as you start with a manual SSH to some system, you might change the configuration, you might change the underlying system, install additional packages which change uh, existing behavior, and provide according debugging options instead. Um, this is like keep the, the core builder environment up and running and provide it to, a, to a, another system or stuff like that, but try to avoid manual SSH. Um, as soon as tests go okay, not okay, okay, not okay, and you don't know why, people will just stop um, looking, looking at them and take them serious. Um, they won't have any trust and they won't care at all. So once you integrate a new QA tool, make sure that it's working properly bef before making it mandatory to accept in the pipeline. Like if we want to have all the pupils jobs to be okay, they should at least be once okay everywhere. Um, also try um, to avoid the um, pulling or cron jobs um, like at a specific times, this is like the deinstall run of uh, Debian. Like, you know, I have to wait four hours to get my change in. Instead, try to trigger immediate actions. Once you push something, immediately start with it. This is like, uh, in Jenkins jobs, don't pull for the, um, or the polling for the, the, the version control changes. Instead, once you know that something is going up to the Git server or to the Garrett or code review system, whatever, just provide according triggers to trigger the according builds. I want immediate actions and, and effects. Um, the manual setup of machine configs, um, I'm not sure if this is an official term, but I just recently read it for, from Mark Hava, the, the, the snowflake. It, all they look alike, but they are still different. Um, as soon as, as you start to run an installer manually and there's one single change in it, the, the result might be just different. So really, it should be all about automation. Um, what was kind of a problem for us, and we have in Jenkins Debian View um, several wrappers for that purposes, is like you have tools with no standardized output. Um, so it makes parsing harder. If you're developing a new tool, make sure that you can rely on the, the output and, and parse it appropriately. And checklists are a, a good way to identify that um, something is going wrong because you might just miss something from the checklist, the checklist might be out of date. Just use automation instead. If you want to check for something, use a Jenkins job. Hard coding, IP addresses, host names, port numbers, whatever, instead of um, configurability is a bad thing. Um, if you build the same thing in the, in the continuous delivery pipeline once and once again, 
don't do this. It should be built once and then reused for tests, for deploying, whatever. Um, and if you don't have according um, notifications, um, developers st um, start to wait and to pull for something instead of just continuing to work on it. We have some uh, um, unresolved problems, actually. Dependence manage dependency management is, is kind of an unsolved problem, like if you build depend on package bar um, and um, you need another package built before, it's kind of tricky to get this automated, so we are researching on that front. Um, we have build depends and depends, but we have no test depends, so we can't build packages which just have, which say, I need this and this and this package, but just for testing, not for building and not for shipping for the runtime. Um, once you have high frequency um, continuous delivery, uh, the dependent repositories um, cause apt to fail quite often because the, the mirror is updated and we have hash some mismatches. Um, we, we are seeing this more and more often, and um, I think we have some kind of, of ideas how to tackle that, but I'd like to talk to the according um, maintainers before. Uh, pew parts, um, we had some like successful runs even uh, if the package couldn't be installed. Um, so it, uh, the actual solution for pew parts was remove the package and everything is fine. The actual package you try to, to um, test. So just to give you an idea that this, these are the projects that might be worth a look. Uh, Deben, everyone of you hopefully. Um, Jenkins, Jenkins Deben Glue might help you. Vagrant is useful for, for all this automated testing. Um, as a, d a developer, Garrett and Garty for code review is really nice. Jenkins Job Builder definitely worth a look. Um, everything under version control, automation is really important. Use dashboards for, for, um, for abstraction to, to not have users get into the details of Jenkins. Tests, 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 really. And uh, build on established workflows and tools like the build, build package workflow works very well for us. And the b only bad thing about this is once you're used to that working, it's really horrible to move outside of such environments. Um, the one of you who are interested in, in, in getting deeper into this, we have a Jenkins Deben group off on um, the 21st um, in room Helsinki. We would I invite to show you up there. I think time is over. Yeah, are there? Hello. Yeah. So I'm I'm the Debian OpenStack my uh, maintainer. Yeah. And uh, so I've been exposed to a lot of CIs from OpenStack world. So I've been using Jenkins to build packages for like two years uh, without Jenkins uh, Debian Glue. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, I'm very happy to see that uh, this kind of usage of uh, ACI is spreading and that you are d using it too. But what I would like to happen is that we use it widely inside Debian. To do that, unfortunately, we have to package Jen uh, Garrett. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I started to do that uh, during the conf. I've packaged one Java library. <laughs> Invite everyone to join that effort. So uh, I don't know much about Java. If, uh, before the conf, I didn't even know how to main maintain something with Maven. And uh, so obviously I need help and I don't want to have it done all by myself. I, I simply would, won't have the time to do it alone. So first, like, please uh, join join me in doing that effort. I I know everybody hates packaging Java Java in Debian, but we have to do it. Uh, that's the first thing. And then, so the final goal would be, you know, already all that we have dget, right? So dget makes uh, the whole of the Debian archive available for everyone to use using git. What w what I envision would be using Garrett on top of dget, and then uh, the um, the people that are in the uploaders field would be um, set as core reviewers in Ga in Garrett, and then so the, we would have this kind of CI you were working about, so yeah. like building the package, running few parts, and whatnot, 
And then once once it's done, then the people in the uploader fields would be able to s say vote plus two workflow. So th that'd be the goal. And I think it's really, really important that we do that and that we have it available on uh, Alioth or in another machine. So the DSA, I already talked to them and they refuse to use Garrett if it's not packaged in Debian and I think they are right to, do so to, to reply this way. So please yeah. join me in packaging <laughs> Garrett. Do you know about how many dependencies we have left to go <laughs> to package in Java before it will work? The question was how many packages are left uh, in... Pardon? 60. There's... Uh, Gerrit uh, used once before, once upon a time, used ant to build. Now we choose buck. So before we package Garrett, we need to package Buck. It alone is a lot of work, and then once we have package Buck, like it maybe it's 30 packages, then we have to do it for Garrett, which is maybe again 30 to 40 packages in Java, I'm not sure. So because it, you will, we will discover as we try to build it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Continuous. <laughs> So just a short question, what are you using for the dashboards? Um, we write our own ones. Um, we started in different <laughs> languages, actually, and just continued. But nothing highly sophisticated. It's really just an abstraction to Git. And so maybe if I would start nowadays from scratch, it's some mixture of Go and uh, Django, which would be actually preferred in our stack. Yeah. Um, <coughs> just a quick reminder about the test dependent. Quick com uh, comment about the test dependencies. So we ran into the same problem that it's very hard to find out which packages test depend on me. Mm -hmm. And we discussed this with the, the package maintainers a while ago, and we actually have a plan how to implement this. It's oh, just nice. not done yet, but we have their agreement. We know how it's gonna look like, and so it's <laughs> that'll help us all for figuring out reverse dependency testing properly without hacks. Nice. I would like to chat about this later. Just a technical question. Yeah. So. The packages you deliver into production, yeah. they are all coming out of the continuous integration environment. Yes. So uh, how di are they signed then? Because do, uh, do we have trusted keys on the infrastructure yeah, we machines? we have trusted keys on the infrastructure. So the signing is essentially uh, anonymously, so to speak. Or yeah, once you have access to the review system and you get approved packages, they end up in the, ca or might end up in the product if everything goes straight forward in the pipeline. Okay. But no manual signing. I mean, you are. It, it's if you want to tag something for whatever reason, for example, internal tooling or stuff like that, you're encouraged to git tag with your sign. But um, no manual um, signing is needed to to bypass the package. Yes. So the personal signing is in the versioning, and yes. for the uh, ready yes. packages, you don't rely on on that anymore. Yes. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further questions? Ask, ask me there. Okay, um, how much effort do you think would it take to write a wanna build front, wanna build like front end for it? Like, say, I'm adding a new distribution, stretch comes out, and I want to rebuild everything for scratch, and the system needs to figure out which package is still missing. Say, I don't want to recompile everything, but just add, mi add the missing bits. No idea, but it okay. might be worth a try. <laughs> we might join on that, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for the question, but um, are you still of the opinion that it's not the right idea to package Jenkins Debian Glue in Debian? Um, it's on my to-do list for this week, actually. Um, Yay! Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the main concerns I have is once it's in the Debian pipeline, it should just the, the binary packages should, should really just fit. And so far, I basically had the company vision or from different companies, what, what's working for them. So I'm just looking at them, but it's definitely on the to-do list. I have a bug opening on GitHub issues, so. There's time for one more question. No questions? So thank you very much Thanks for the talk everyone. and good luck.